<clears throat> Hemo. Hemo. Uh, here, give me the mic. I can do. I can do it. Hemochromatosis. Yeah. <sighs> Is too much iron in the body. I know what you're thinking, Jimmy. How can too much iron be bad? Doesn't iron make you strong? Unfortunately, not always. People with hemochromatosis absorb two to three times the normal amount of iron from the food they eat. Over the years, this excess iron builds up in the body where it can damage vital organs. Sometimes this damage is severe enough that it can even be deadly. Hemochromatosis is the most common genetic disorder in Canada, yet too often is misdiagnosed. As many as one in nine people could be carriers of HHC. Let's give you an idea of how many people that is. If you are walking down the street with 180 people, as many as 20 could be carriers. Hemochromatosis is more prevalent in the northern European Caucasian population, but other populations are starting to become at risk as well, though much more minimal. It is estimated that at least one in 300 Canadians have the genetic makeup necessary to develop HHC. That means that about 100,000 people in Canada currently have hemochromatosis. I'll bet you're wondering how this might affect your family, Jimmy. Typically, if two carriers have four children, one of these children will have both genes, two will each have one of the genes, and one will not carry either gene. We have two copies of all our genes, so if the father has one gene, hemochromatosis gene, and he's a carrier, and the mother has one hemochromatosis gene and she's a carrier, then if they come together and have children, then there's a possibility that a child will inherit both abnormal copies from each parent. So, Jimmy, I'm sure by now you're wondering how too much iron causes a problem. The average person has about four grams of iron circulating throughout their body. However, someone with hemochromatosis can have anywhere from 15 grams to 60 grams. Since blood can only hold so much, the excess iron is stored in other places, like organs, that are not necessarily designed to hold it. This is when the trouble begins. One of the main organs affected is the liver. Symptoms include enlargement, inflammation, internal hemorrhaging and scarring, which can lead to cirrhosis, hepatitis A, and in severe cases, cancer. A damaged pancreas can lead to diabetes. The heart is weakened and can result in a heart murmur, arrhythmia, which is an irregular heartbeat, and cardiomyopathy, which is a disease of the heart muscle. More than half of patients with hemochromatosis will develop arthritis in the joints, especially the first two knuckles of the hand. If the brain is affected, symptoms include uh, um, uh, oh, memory loss and mood disorders. The iron in the pituitary gland causes <sighs> loss of libido, premature menopause, and loss of body hair. Other symptoms to be aware of are sudden weight gain or loss, fatigue, or skin discoloration such as bronzing, like a good tan, or conversely slate gray. It's important to remember that symptoms can vary widely depending on the person. I decided to see my doctor in 2002 after my dad was diagnosed with liver cancer and I happened to notice the symptoms uh, as a contributing factor to liver cancer. Looking back, uh, the symptoms that I noticed were uh, increasing fatigue and my family noticed that as well. Uh, I had uh, very uh, stiff joints throughout my body and I had specific pain in several of my lower joints. Hey Jimmy, do you know what the best treatment option is? Once absorbed, iron is very difficult to get rid of. The only significant way to get rid of iron is through blood loss. It's very similar to a blood donation. Usually about the same amount of blood is removed, which is usually about 500 mils per session. The reason that we take blood is that this is the most effective way of removing iron from the body. This treatment works because having blood withdrawn forces the body to make replacement blood, 
which draws the excess iron out of storage, thereby depleting the overall iron in the body. Phlebotomies are usually done in outpatient clinics when the patient is actively being de-ironed. Once they reach maintenance therapy, however, they can donate to Canadian Blood Services if they meet all the other health requirements. Most people who visit their doctors regularly believe their iron levels are being checked when they have blood tests done, but actually, they're not. If one of your parents or an immediate family member has been diagnosed with hemochromatosis, you should definitely have your iron levels tested. If those are elevated, genetic tests will confirm the diagnosis. To prevent permanent damage, early diagnosis and treatment is the key. Alcohol greatly increases the absorption of iron. They should not take iron as a supplement or eat raw shellfish. Cutting back on red meat consumption can extend the time between maintenance treatments. Avoid highly iron fortified foods like most cold breakfast cereals. Foods that increase absorption of iron, such as vitamin C and orange juice, is recommended only between meals. On the other hand, tea and coffee inhibit iron absorption, so having them with meals can help. As with most dietary guidelines, moderation is the key. My family life was uh, not uh, adversely affected because we had made some of those adjustments anyway. Uh, what was uh, good to know was that uh, now that it had a name and it was diagnosed as such and we were doing something about it, uh, uh, my family was very supportive and what we needed to do. The symptoms for hemochromatosis can be very vague and masked by other conditions. Consult with your doctor. They may not have considered hemochromatosis as a contributing factor. If diagnosed in the early stages, damage that can be caused by hemochromatosis is preventable. For more information on hemochromatosis, contact the Canadian Hemochromatosis Society at www.toomuchiron.ca or our toll-free number 1-877-BAD-IRON.